In every species, there is a natural need for survival. With evolution and technology, the hierarchy of power adjusts so that one species can control another. On Earth, humans are regarded as the dominating species, while out there, in the vast universe and multiple dimensions, other species are at work, simply surviving, while others attempt to enslave and assimilate the weaker into their empire. How does this link to the people of Earth? Here we explore, in the lore behind, the Nyland. Long before the Resonance Cascade that changed Earth forever, in another universe, the Nyland species thrived. Here they were unaware of the terror that was soon to come. Although not a lot is known about this race before their encounter with humanity, the Nyland species were extremely powerful and to some were viewed as godlike beings. To a human, the Nyland species resemble an enormous baby with an abnormally large head. Although their heads were so large, their brains were shown to be small after their heads opened like a flower. Most notable about the creatures is that they had three arms, with their third arm coming out of their chest, with even their hands consisting of three claw-like fingers. With the Nylance head being so enormous, a thick cord helps balance the weight to keep it upright. As the Combine Empire moved from dimension to dimension to seek intelligent life forms, they came across the homeworld of the Nylanth and attacked, hunting down all of the members of the species but one. This final Nylanth managed to escape the slaughter by making his way to the border world of Zen, a dimension seemingly safe from the Combine. With his whole race dead, this Nylanth was the last creature of a once powerful race, another casualty of the Combine. Within Zen, the Nylanth adjusted to the new ecosystem. As the years passed, more creatures found their way to the border world. One of these being the Vortigaunt, who, just like the Nylant species, had been attacked by the Combine. In this case, the Vortigaunt had managed to escape with many of their species intact. It is believed that the alien controllers came with the Nylant due to them looking extremely similar in biology, appearing like smaller versions of the giant Nylant. Although unable to protect himself against the Combine, the Nylanth found himself to be the most powerful creature within Zen, and so he enslaved the newly arriving Vortigaunt. The creature had the ability to control energy and launch powerful spheres at those unwilling to cooperate. A blue sphere was shown to inflict extreme damage to any unfortunate enough to be hit by one, while his green orbs manipulated space and teleported those hit by them to a location of the Nylanth's choosing. This came in handy for the creature when he needed to teleport creatures into his proximity to help defend it against any threat. Within Zen, the Nylanth created a home for himself and resided in a chamber full of crystals. Although not native to the environment, the crystals resonated with the Nylanth where he was able to absorb power from them to restore any energy and heal himself when injured. To navigate the terrain of Zen, the Nylanth had a device that allowed him to levitate attached to his bottom half. It is unknown whether this is Nylanth technology or whether this implementation was a result of the Combine invasion. On his wrists, the Nylanth wears metallic bracelets similar to the bands worn by the Vortigaunt after he enslaved them. It is presumed that the band aids him in controlling the species. In another dimension on planet Earth, the scientists at the Black Mesa research facility had discovered a new way to access other dimensions, and so they came across Zen. While the humans saw a new world as a great opportunity to learn about the universe and study a new way of life, the Nylanth viewed this new gateway as a final escape from the Combine in the event that they were ever able to access Zen. After a failed experiment at the Black Mesa research facility, a resonance cascade occurred and ripped a hole in the fabric of reality. With this disaster, the Nylanth took this opportunity to send his slaves through the rift to Earth. With the facility in a state of disaster, the scientists scrambled to reverse the cascade as the Nylanth watched from afar, waiting for his new sanctuary to be ready to move to. Desperate for a new home, away from the threat of the Combine, 
the Nylanth had underestimated the ability of the human race. Instead of planning an attack and considering what threat the race could pose, he had unintentionally put himself at risk. Fearing the Combine for their brutal tactics, he had essentially attempted to do the same thing to humanity for his own survival. As the Vortigaunt and Xenian lifeforms roamed the Black Mesa facility, a scientist, Gordon Freeman, caught the attention of the Nylanth after he had successfully evaded the attacks of the creature's slave army. Working through the facility, Gordon managed to send a satellite delivery rocket through the rift to close it, but this attempt was futile due to the Nylanth's strong ability to mentally keep the rift active. To reduce how effective the scientists were, the Nylanth teleported to Vortigaunt to retrieve Xenian crystals stolen by the humans stored in the Biodome complex. These actions portraying the Nylanth's ability to use multiple powers at once, indicating a high degree of intelligence. Although only being introduced to the human race during the Resonance Cascade, the Nylanth was also able to pick up the English language fairly quickly. While his understanding of the language was shown to be fairly basic, the Nylanth was able to telepathically communicate with Gordon Freeman in an attempt to deter him from continuing with his goal of killing the creature to close the rift. With Gordon entering Zen, the Nylanth telepathically tells him that he cannot win, that everyone will die, and later shouts Freeman as Gordon enters his lair. After a brutal fight, the Freeman manages to weaken the Nylanth's healing crystals and attacks his brain, killing him. This action instantly closing the rift and freeing the Vortigaunt from the Nylanth's rule. Although the Nylanth had been defeated, his actions triggered events that would change humanity forever. Due to the rift opening between Earth and Zen, the Combine were able to discover Earth's location and invade it, taking control of the planet and the people on it, where for the years to come, Humanity would suffer the aftermath of a brutal invasion by the Interdimensional Empire intent on taking control of all sentient life. While regarded by those who know of the Nylanth as an evil entity, many may feel compassion for the creature that escaped the brutal genocide of his own species. Since that event, he had searched for a way to escape the Combine permanently. Although his methods were questionable, the question remains. Was the Nylanth truly an evil creature, or just the last of its kind desperate to survive? Behind the scenes, theories and cut content. Now, in this section, I'll be looking at everything I can find about the Nylanth. This will range from behind the scenes, theories and cut content. Okay, so we'll begin on the Nylanth's character model. Now this interestingly came down to Gabe Newell's son, Grey. In an interview with Valve News Network, Grey explained that when Valve were deciding what would be scary to fight against in the game, Gabe's son wasn't born yet, and the idea of childbirth at that time appeared to be the scariest thing to anyone. With this, we got a giant creepy looking baby based on Gabe Newell's son. What a legacy. It's something I've always wondered about with that design choice. Although the Nylanth did creep me out as a kid, I'm glad that they went into the direction of the Combine and the horror of assimilation into a dominating empire for the sequels. The interview is absolutely worth a watch if you haven't seen it, so I've linked it below. In Raising the Bar, we can see the concept art for the Nylon. This is truly terrifying and pretty important to mention a few things. First off, it looks like the poor creature is being tortured. Now this could have been how it was originally meant to be held up and possibly Valve later in development went with the mechanical device attached to its bottom to levitate it. We can also see that it only has two arms instead of three, which would pull it away from the similarities it has with the other Xenian lifeforms, due to the fact that they mostly have three arms. A big thing I notice is that the art shows the Nylant's brain is absolutely huge, just peeking out of its head, while in the completed character model we got, we can see the brain only fits a small space of the Nylant's head, now, on to the creature's name. Ted Backman, a former art director at Valve, states that the name Nylan had two meanings. The first being nihilism, a philosophy expressing some form of negation towards life or towards fundamental concepts such as knowledge, existence, and the meaning of life. Basically, that all life is meaningless and that knowledge is impossible. Pretty depressing, but it fits well with the Nylan's reaction to his species genocide and a slight nod of the events to come for humanity in the sequels. 
The second interesting part of the Nylant's name is the anth part, which relates to the Greek word antho, meaning flower, a simple representation of how the Nylant's head opens up like a flower. Fun fact, Ted also gave his likeness to Citizen Male 02 in the sequel. You've probably killed him a few times. Now over on the Half-Life wiki, they have compiled a list of telepathic messages that the Nylant sends you as you're working through the game. Now this list isn't 100% accurate due to the way that the creature speaks, but this is one of those great things to look back on after playing the game, after maybe missing a few of them. Phrases like, comes another, sounds fairly sinister, insinuating that the Nylant has killed many who have entered Zen. Alone, like you, alone. Again, as a kid, this would have probably creeped me out. Now some do allude to future events. The one that jumps out for me is, deceive you, he will deceive you. I'm 99% sure that the Nylanth is talking about the G-Man here, which begs the question, has the G-Man met with the Nylanth previously? How would I have knowledge of him? The truth, you will never know the truth. Again, this could relate to the G-Man and whatever he and his employers are planning. Just looking through these gets me really excited for the possibility of the next installment of the series. After the way that Alex ended, I'm sure that we'll get one at some point. I'll avoid spoilers on that because I'm aware that not everyone has played the game due to the game being limited to VR only. But if you do have access to it, please play it. It's one of the best experiences I've had playing a game. Even terrifying at some points. One that jumps out is being grabbed by a barnacle and it truly feels like you're going to die. I want to thank the Half-Life fandom for the bits of information in this section. I could spend hours looking through all of this information that the guys have compiled together. I've linked the website below so you can go for a read too. Now I ask, would you like to see the Nylanth return for a future game? I mean, the creature exploded into a ball of green energy. Historically, green means teleport in the Half-Life universe, so there could be a small chance that he survived. We were also teleported away before we could see the body. Now, Resistance member, enjoy your day. Bye.